the unicorn, one of the most renowned mythological creatures, is widely recognized for its distinctive appearance. It is portrayed as a horse with a solitary horn positioned in the middle of its forehead, hence the name unicorn. Derived from the Latin word for one horn, these remarkable creatures are described as gentle in nature yet incredibly unpredictable. Attempts to domesticate them were virtually futile as they evaded all endeavors made by humans to approach them. Unicorns were believed to be approachable by virgin maidens with a pure heart, who could touch and sometimes even ride them if the creature allowed. This association led to the unicorn becoming a symbol of purity and chastity during the Middle Ages. The exact mythical origins of the unicorn are uncertain as it does not appear in Greek mythology. However, Greek authors included mentions of unicorns in their bestiaries. Similarly, the creature is referenced in Chinese, Indian and Middle Eastern traditions. Nonetheless, the unicorn's popularity increased during the late Middle Ages and early Renaissance, largely due to its connection to the iconic figure of the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. If you love mythology-related content, like this video and subscribe to Weird Mythology for weekly uploads. Artworks from that time depicted Virgin Mary holding a unicorn in her lap, symbolizing the purity of Jesus' conception. It was a common belief during that era that the spiral-shaped horns of the unicorns possessed magical and healing properties. Exploiting these superstitions, unscrupulous fishermen would sell the tusks of narwhals as unicorn horns. Even Queen Elizabeth I of England owned one of these narwhal tusks, mistakenly believing it to be a genuine unicorn horn. Speaking of the Kingdom of England, the unicorn is an integral part of the royal coat of arms of Queen Elizabeth II, as well as numerous other coats of arms worldwide. Early translations of the Hebrew Bible, such as the Septuagint and the Vulgate, rendered the Hebrew word riem as unicorn, monoceros and unicornus in Greek and Latin respectively. The riem is mentioned in several verses in the Bible and is associated with qualities of strength and power. It is also considered one of the symbols of the tribe of Ephraim. However, some Hebrew sources have proposed that the tahash mentioned in the Bible often translated as badger, may refer to the unicorn that is commonly understood. There is a possibility that the connection between the Riem and the mythical unicorn stems from the actual sightings. The Holy Land has always attracted pilgrims and tourists who sought to walk in the footsteps of Jesus of Nazareth. Numerous travelers, including monks and artists, documented their challenging journeys with intricate descriptions providing insights into the region's geography, flora and fauna. Some of these accounts, particularly from the early modern period, features depictions, sometimes illustrated, of a mysterious unicorn that was encountered during their travels. For instance, in one of the earliest printed books documenting a journey to the Holy Land, authored by the German traveler Bernhard von Bredenbach, there was an illustration depicting various animals he encountered during his expedition. This book, written between 1484 and 1486, chronicles von Bredenbach's journey from Venice to Jaffa, followed by his pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and later his travels southward to the Sinai Desert. Among the depicted animals, including a camel, a crocodile, a goat, and a salamander, there is also an illustration of a unicorn. Von Bredenbach mentioned catching a brief glimpse of this creature in a Sinai region. Could this sighting possibly refer to the Riem, which is known to inhabit the Negev and surrounding desert areas? The King James Version of the Book of Job followed the Sepulgint and Jerome's Vulgate in the translation of Riem into unicorn. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with the band in the furrow? Or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him because his strength is great? Or wilt thou leave thy labor to him? Wilt thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barn? The Reims dwelling in opposite corners of the world remained separated for a staggering 70 years without ever crossing paths until the day arrives when they come together for their mating. The encounter is brief as the female swiftly dispatches the male with a single deadly bite, 
Following this encounter, the female conceives and undergoes an extraordinary 12-year-long pregnancy. During the final year, she loses the ability to walk and can only sway from side to side, relying on her saliva to nourish the earth and sustain enough vegetation for her survival. Instead of giving birth conventionally, her stomach ruptures, resulting in instantaneous death. However, twins are miraculously born from this occurrence, one male and one female. Without delay, they rise and embark on separate paths, one journeying eastward and the other westward. In the book of Genesis, amidst the great flood, as Noah gathered animals from all corners to seek refuge in the ark, the Reams also approached to join the procession. However, due to their immense size, they posed a challenge in terms of fitting within the limited space available. Nevertheless, Noah ensured their safety and preservation. According to one account, he tethered them behind the ark and they diligently followed by running on land and later swimming in the waters. Another version suggests that the flood coincided with the birth of the young Reams, rendering them small enough to comfortably occupy space within the ark. In a separate account in the Bible, in an extraordinary encounter, King David once came face to face with the mighty Ream, making the slumbering creature for a towering mountain, David fiercely began ascending its colossal form. Startled awake, the Ream lifted David high upon its massive horns. In that precarious moment, David made a solemn vow to construct a temple of grand proportions if God would spare his life. Responding to David's plea, God dispatched a lion to the scene. Recognizing the lion as the king of beasts, the Ream humbly prostrated itself before the majestic predator allowing David to safely descend from its horns. Swiftly, God sent a deer diverting the lion's attention towards the chase, thus delivering David from both the lion and the grasp of Reem. Scottish folklore reveres the formidable and majestic unicorns, renowned for their independence and resistance to capture or subjugation. This resonates deeply with Scottish spirit and their tumultuous history. While unicorns exist in the realm of mythology, the symbolic significance they carry has always captivated the hearts of the Scots. The unicorn made its debut in the Royal Coat of Arms of Scotland during the middle of the 16th century. Before the Union of the Crown in 1603, Scotland's coat of arms was upheld by two unicorns. However, when King James VI of Scotland ascended to the throne of England as James I, one of the unicorns was replaced by the lion the national animal of England. This change was made to symbolize the unity between the two countries. It is worth noting that in folklore, lions and unicorns have traditionally been depicted as adversaries, vying for the title of the King of Beasts. The fascinating aspect to consider is that Scottish unicorns depicted in heraldry are consistently depicted with gold chains adorning them. The reason behind this remains uncertain, but it is believed to symbolize the authority and power of Scottish kings. The presence of these chains signifies the ability to subdue and control even the most untamable and elusive creatures. In Islamic tradition, the unicorn finds its closest parallel in the figure of the Burak. The Burak is believed to have transported the Prophet Muhammad to heaven serving as a means of transportation during his night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem and back. Description of the Barak depicted as a white creature resembling a hybrid of a mule and a donkey with wings on its side. Over time, variations emerged in the depiction of the Barak, with some traditions portraying it as a steed with the head of a woman and the tail of a peacock. As the story of Muhammad's night journey became intertwined with its ascension to heaven, the Barak took on an increasingly significant role, replacing the latter as how Muhammad accessed the celestial realm. Starting from the 14th century, the myth of the Barak gained popularity in Persian miniature painting. Artists drew inspiration from ancient representations of creatures like griffins, sphinxes, and centaurs to visualize the Barak. This subject matter became a beloved theme in Persian art during that time. The significance of the unicorn was recognized by the Romans as well. Pliny the Elder, in 50 AD, made the earliest recorded mention of the unicorn. He described it as the most ferocious of animals, believed to be impossible to capture alive. According to Pliny, the unicorn had the body of a horse, the head of a stag, the feet of an elephant, 
the tail of a boar, and a single black horn measuring three feet in length in the middle of its forehead. He also noted that its cry resembled a deep bellow. In medieval and renaissance mythology, the depiction of unicorns draw inspiration from the biblical accounts. These mythical creatures are described as having a single horn protruding from their foreheads. They are often portrayed as a combination of donkey, horse or goat. During the Renaissance period, the unicorn was commonly depicted as a horse with a narwhal-like horn emerging from its forehead. They are believed to possess exceptional strength, speed, intelligence and ferocity compared to other horses. However, unicorns are said to have a special affinity for fair maidens and virgins, becoming gentle and tame in their presence. This belief led to the practice of using maidens as bait in attempts to capture unicorns. In artistic representations, unicorns are typically depicted with pure white or greyish white coats. During the Renaissance, the term alicorn emerged to refer to both the unicorn horn itself and the substance it was believed to be made of. In contemporary popular culture, the portrayal of unicorns has taken various forms. In the Harry Potter book series, the unicorn plays a significant role as Voldemort consumes its blood to sustain his life. Another notable depiction is found in the game Dungeons & Dragons, where the character Uni often finds herself in troublesome situations just when the heroes are about to return home. Additionally, the animated fantasy film The Last Unicorn created by Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass in 1982 has become a cultural icon, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Unicorns hold a special place in the hearts of young children, making them one of the most beloved creatures. Consequently, the market is abundant with toys featuring these mystical beings. However, it's not just children who are captivated by the enchanting allure of unicorns. Even those older than 12 find themselves spellbound by the majestic beauty and the splendor they embody.